Of the different approaches of the people that I mentioned earlier between Habermas, Lacona, and Dr. Craig, in your opinion, are all of their approaches subject to the same kind of like fatal flaw that you were kind of mentioning earlier? Or is one approach better than other approaches, like when it comes to the minimal facts case? When you go back to that very first answer I gave you about what's the central difference, all three of those fall on the minimalist side of that central difference. So you'll remember that the central difference was, um, so they're all, they're all trying not to rely on that idea that this is what the witnesses claimed. Um, and they're all making some kind of use uh, that's fairly important to them of scholarly consensus. Okay, some level of scholarly consensus. So in that sense, they're all on that same minimalist side. Now, the two there that are most similar to each other are Habermas and Lacona. Um, I would say Lacona's historical bedrock approach is just more a lengthier explication of Habermas's minimal facts. Dr. Craig's is a little different because um, the most noticeable difference is that he adds the empty tomb, okay? Um, and, you know, Habermas says that the empty tomb is acknowledged by 75% of scholars, but with some qualifiers. In fact, I have a video on this coming up. Um, so Craig uses the empty tomb. But I, I think that if you use the empty tomb, but you still continue to try not to use that idea that the, um, that the gospel's accounts are not embellished, you're still going to be fatally weak. And there are a couple of things that the, the skeptic can do or the um, you know, liberal scholar can do. One is just to deny the empty two um, and to say that really doesn't have that much scholarly acknowledgement. Uh, Bart Ehrman has withdrawn his acknowledgement of the empty two. He used to acknowledge it, now he doesn't eat anymore. Um, he, he doesn't acknowledge it anymore. Uh, another thing that, that a, a more liberal scholar can do is to just say, like Allison does, a kind of a, well, maybe there are just more things in heaven and earth that are than are dreamt of in our philosophy, and uh, there's just weirdness that takes place, but um, why should I believe that Jesus really physically rose from the dead? And uh, Dr. Craig tries to answer that uh, without taking a lot of time. I'm not going to go into the various other ways that he tries to answer that, but I think they are all fatally compromised by the fact that he calls the approach of William Paley, which is basically what I'm doing, I would call it a Paleyan approach, forever obsolete. So he's definitely trying to distance himself from that. And I think as long as you do that, you're going to not be able to give a strong argument specifically for the physical resurrection of Jesus. Hello, Cameron here. Thanks for watching this little clip. If you want more, there's actually a whole interview this clip came from. Just uh, click the link on the screen. Oh, and by the way, we post two to three new videos a week. So if you're interested in apologetics at all, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can catch our latest content. Uh, oh, and then lastly, remember that Christianity is true.